Hello, my name is Lisa Bush, and I'm with Central Square Technology, and I'd like to welcome you to the Affordable Integrated Municipal Software Webinar. Um, right now, you should be looking at my desktop. Um, I do have everybody on mute, so if you do have questions, um, you can chat with me, or um, I'm going to stay on at the end to answer questions. I just wanted to let you know about the format. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about our integrated solution. We've got over 30 different integrated products at Central Square, and we give you the ability to post in detail. So as an example, um, you can use our utility system, and if you post in detail, you'll be able to see the customer's bill or the employee's paid, in the accounting system. We also have, as I mentioned, those 30 different integrated products so that you don't have to have any side spreadsheets. So you're not going to have to have a, a workaround. So everything works together. You turn on the components as you need it. We're going to spend the first part of the presentation talking about our fund accounting solution. It was designed from the ground up um, to work for local governments so you can track unlimited funds, you're going to get line item budgeting. You're going to know at any point, you know, funds that are available and, and get warnings if you are over your budget. On the second part of the presentation, we are going to talk about the billing solution. Um, this solution allows you to bill for unlimited metered and non-metered and non-recurring charges. Everything's defined. It is a true cycle billing system. So as an example, if you have customers that move in or move out mid-cycle, we can automatically prorate those charges if that's the way you want to set it up. But it handles those different scenarios. Um, we're going to also give you the ability to email utility bills, payments um, on the website. We'll take a look at that technology and also talk about working with um, different satellite solutions so that you can electronically get your readings imported in. Um, at the end, we'll talk about the benefits of one database of names and addresses. Think about how nice it would be if one of your constituents calls you and on one screen you can see their utility accounts, their tax bills, their building permits, code enforcement, cemetery plots, just by knowing their name. In the exact same view by property. So who owns it, the valuation, but all the activities that have happened at that particular address. And at the very end, we're gonna talk about our new report designer. It currently works with our financial products, our utility billing, and tax billing. We give you the ability to drag and drop fields from the database to create any type of report or file. So we'll look, we'll look at that at the very end. Here's my contact information. So if you do have questions, um, you can certainly call me or email me after the presentation, but I will stay on at the end in case there are questions. So let's go ahead and let's bring up the screen. And let's see here, let me to the main splash screen. When you log on to our software, this is the screen that you're going to see. As I mentioned, we've got over 30 different integrated products. You pick and choose and add these on your time frame. So at any point, you can turn those on. And we, we've never changed those prices, very affordable. Let's take a look at the dollar sign. This is where um, you're going to have the financial system. As I mentioned, it's a true fund accounting solution. Even within this area, you can pick and choose the components that you need to automate your organization. Um, look and feel is the same. So activities that you do on a daily basis, we've got those grouped under daily, so you know where to go. Things that you might do once a month or once a year, we're gonna group those under the periodic. So once again, all the menus are same for all the different products. We're gonna also have a reports tab. Within our solution, um, you've got unlimited history. So if you wanna run a financial from 10 years ago, you've got the ability to do that. All of our reports, you can email, you can go to Word, you can go to Excel, or even create a PDF. So once again, that's all standard in our reports, and we'll look at some today. Inquiries. We're going to give you the ability to search for unlimited history. So as long as you've been using the system, you've got access to that history. Um, I'm going to show you some examples where we let you post in detail. So you can actually see employees that were paid in the accounting system 
or receipts at the counter or customers that were billed. So that's all tightly integrated with the financial solution. Um, the very last tab is something called tables. This is where you get started. This is where you can define your unique information so that we can literally install this solution all over North America. Very, very flexible. So let's start with the general ledger. It's the heart of the system. Everything is integrated with the general ledger. And we'll take a look at the screen that you would go to to enter in a journal entry. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up an example but a couple of things I want to point out. One is, if you look at the, um, the navigation, you're going to be able to um, very easily um, navigate. It's like any other Microsoft product. If you have a question within the software, you can electronically log a support call. You simply hit the telephone. We know exactly what product. You can submit that call within the software. Now, a couple of other things I want to point out is this is a date-driven system. We give you the ability to post to any period. So here it is, June 4th. If I need to post a journal all the way back to December, I've got the ability to do that. Now, I can also lock down December where I can't post to that period. You're in the driver's seat. Um, a couple of other nice features. Um, we also have an integrated project or grant accounting. You can turn on this capability and you can create a project that could last 10 years or it might be as simple as something that happened over a weekend where you want to accumulate costs. So you define it and you can pick that transaction and tag it there. And all of our um, journals such as journals, purchase orders, payables, even payroll time can go to a project that you define, but you don't have to code it into your chart of accounts. Um, one other thing I want to point out, we're going to make sure that debits and credits equal, even if you're crossing funds. And we also have a nice feature called recurring. You can define in the setup your different recurring journal entries. We have this feature for purchase orders and payables as well, where it defaults the accounting. You can tweak it, but you don't always have to remember all of the detail. You can give it a name and have it either default the accounts and the dollar amounts, or maybe just the accounts, and then you let the system know what the dollar amounts are. So once again, things to make your life a little bit easier. Now, with our solution, you can look at things before you post or after you post. As an example, if you want to look at, um, let's say, everything that came over from utility billing, we could look at just those journals or a specific period or maybe a date range. And once you select this, we're going to be able to look at it on the screen. Um, you could email it. I could go to Word or Excel. Once again, just like a Microsoft product. But like I said, all of the reports, you can look on the screen. Now, we're going to take a look later on and take a look at how, if we post in detail, I can see what customers make up that journal. Now, under periodic, this is where you'll go to um, where you make um, create your budget. We all know how important the budget is to the fund accounting. So we've got a couple of different ways you can create your budget. One is most of our customers like to use Excel and they'll actually export their history to Excel and create their new budget and then when they're finished they simply upload the new approved budget. So we'll take a look at this example. So here's a template that I've created and once again, I could export out different parts of the organization, um, a, a different time frame. I might want to start with revenue accounts or expenditure accounts. I'm just going to go ahead and dump everything to Excel. And in just a second, we're going to have the ability to look at some historical information in Excel so that we can create our new budget. So let's hit Excel. And on your toolbar, it's going to put an Excel workbook. Here it is. And I'll go ahead and bring this up. And so here I've got, in my example, I've got all my funds. I've got each line item. I've got previous year budget. I've got year-to-date actual. I even have a projected amount. But I can see detail by period what actually happened. So I'm in Excel. I can create my new budget. I can go through all those different iterations with the council, 
But the key thing is, once you finalize your budget, we're simply going to just import the final approved budget into the accounting system. So once you've got that, you simply say upload, we're going to bring it in, and then from that point on, we're going to track it. We're going to track it when you pay your bills. Do you want a warning if you're over your budget? We're going to track it in your financial statements. You're going to get that budget comparison. We're going to also track it as you do inquiry. So once it's in, we're going to make sure that, you know, you know how you're doing with your budget. Now, if you don't want to use Excel, we also have other ways. You can key in your budget, but we have worksheets. Um, we can do across the board increases. So once again, once it's in, we're going to track it the same way. We also have some clients that they may need to do budget changes once they finalize their budget. So we can track those revisions. We're going to track what you changed and why you changed it. We've got reports that you can run for your original budget or your revised budget. And I've also got a report that I can run for a range of years and actually see by line item, what did I budget? Show me those changes, compare it to the actual. So once again, I can see trends. If there are, maybe I'm always changing a certain line item. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but we do have an easy process. If you do need to um, close your year, you can easily reopen the year. So you're not going to be in limbo. Um, go ahead and close your year. You can run financial statements. Several weeks later, you might, when the auditors come on site, you can reopen that previously closed year. So it's an easy process. Um, we also have an easy way to reverse an entry. If you do make a mistake, if you know the transaction number, just type it in. If you don't, you've always got that search. You're going to see this search throughout the presentation, and you're able to enter in information on what you do know. So in this example, I'm going to say, I want to look at entries that came over from payroll, and that's all I know. Now, typically, I would probably know a date range or a dollar amount or maybe even a description, but I can search just based on limited information. Once I find the transaction, if this is the one that I want to reverse, I simply hit post, we make the offsetting entry, there's a complete audit trail, so it's very easy and very forgiving if you do make a mistake. And once again, on any one of these options, you can lock it down. Maybe Lisa is the only person that can, you know, close the year. I'm going to reports. As I mentioned, these reports come standard. All of the products come with standard reports. We're going to take a look at our report designer at the end so you can create any kind of report. But for most of our municipalities, these reports get them the information that they need to run their organization. So a couple reports that you might be interested in. One is this expenditures um, report so that you can actually see not only what have you budgeted, what have you spent, but you're going to also know maybe are there any outstanding purchase orders. So that's one of those components. If you use our purchase orders, it's tightly integrated. You're not doing any extra work, and you get a better feel for the actual budget availability. But it's totally up to you, and you can decide if you need that capability. It's never too late to turn it on. Now, a report that you'll definitely run for your board is our statement of revenues and expenditure. You can decide, do you want to run it for the original budget or revised? Do you want a previous year comparison? How do you like to see your budget, percentage or dollar amount? Once again, any year, any period. And we also have a nice feature on all of our financial reports. You can slice it out based on how you've defined your chart of accounts. An example is maybe I want to run this by fund, but I only want to see the general fund. I might have 10 or 12 different funds and I don't want to see them all. So you can slice it down. Or maybe you, only, you want to see it for a certain department so or a certain range of account numbers. So once you define it, we're able to slice out a report based on that segment. So on this example, I pulled it out for the general fund, and I've got revenues and expenditures. But once again, I've got that budget comparison. Now, here's a feature I really like. We even give you the ability to decide which accounts do you want to roll into your new year. As an example, maybe there's one of these accounts you're going to stop using this year. You can just say, don't roll it, 
I still have all the old history, but I don't have to look at it going forward. So little things like that um, to make your life easier. Also, under the reports, I could do a balance sheet. I could do a combining balance sheet, or I could do um, a balance sheet for one fund or all funds or a range of funds. And I also have this um, historical budget report that I can run for a range of years and see budgets, any changes, compare it to the actual. So for most of our municipalities, this is going to get them exactly what they need. Now, we also have a tool called Report Excellence, and it's designed for municipalities that love to use Excel. You currently have a fantastic financial statement that you, you're using Excel to present to the board, and, and this tool allows you to directly link that workbook to the accounting software. You're not having to redo it each month. It directly links, so you just rerun it with new financial information. You can also um, very easily export a list of transactions. So, um, you know, if I want to, you know, maybe I call this my budget report. Let's see. Oh. And I can do that. Actually, I'll call this my audit file. There we go. So here it is. And then I can decide, um, okay, what point in time do I want to export out transactions? Maybe the auditors are, are coming and I want to do it for the entire fiscal year. Or maybe they want to see the last five years. Or maybe they want to see just a certain date range. I'm going to go ahead and do this for the entire year of 2018. I'm on a calendar year um, fiscal period. And I can then decide, well, what types of accounts? Maybe they're only concerned about looking at revenue or expenditure, or I can grab them all. I can even separate it by a certain fund or a certain department. So I can be very selective on what detail I want to export out for what point in time. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this file. And right, right here it is. And so I can see very quickly in detail. Let's see, where did that file go? Here it is. All the detail for that point in time. So once again, I can take a look at this. Um, maybe the auditors, they're getting ready to come on site for the audit. They can import this into their audit file and they can see detailed transactions. You even have things like the source, so receipt numbers, um, invoice numbers, you've got vendor PO information, debits and credits, and even projects and grants. So it's that easy just to grab detailed information for any um, date range. Okay, so let's go back to the general ledger and let's take a look at some of those inquiries that I was talking about. One is, let's say in this example, you want to look up an inquiry, and maybe the only thing you know is that it's $25. You don't know when it happened or where it came from. You're looking for a needle in a haystack. I can search. So here's an example where it started in accounts payable. I'm paying the copier lease. If I need to know more, I can drill down and see information on the vendor, the invoice, um, if I've attached that document, I can even see the attachment. So if you want to attach the physical invoice or who approved it, you've got the ability to um, attach unlimited documents. I even know the status of the check. So if it's cleared the bank, and once again, I've got all the accounting. So that gives you an idea of how easy it is to drill down and see that detail. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. This is one that I like. Um, we'll take a look at an example where we did a billing on the utility side and we wanna see how it comes over to the general ledger. This could be any account though. So you select the account. Now a couple of things you can do here. One is I can print in detail everything that went in and out of this um, account for the year. 
And I can go back and look at any year. I could go back 10 years from now and see the detail that I can see. I did all the billings and I've got the total credit, which is great, but I need to know more information. So let's say we want to go take a look at February and I can drill down and see I did one billing in February. Here's the total credit. And here's the journal that was created. You know, you did a, a, a billing where we break out your water, your sewer, your trash, your tax, all those components. A lot of systems will stop here. We take it a step further. We give you the ability to actually see the customers that were billed in the billing system, in the accounting system. So we're not having to leave the accounting. We can see how everything comes in. We do the same thing for payroll, for receipts at the counter. So once again, you're able to see all that detail without having to leave the accounting solution. Let's take a look at one more example. Here's one where, once again, I can look at any year and any month. I can see all of my funds. Once again, I've got two. You can have as many as you want. So I'm going to double click on the general fund. And over here, I can see all my departments. I can have as many as I want. I've got the budget. I've got the balance. I've got year-to-date activity. I can look at expenses, revenue, balances. But let's drill down. Here I can see all of the transactions that happened that period. I can see receipts at the counter, um, payroll runs. Let's take a look at an example where we ran a payroll. Okay, so here's the journal. There's a lot of accounting when you do a payroll run. So like I said, a lot of systems will stop here. We take it a step further. So if you want to see what employees make up that journal, I can see at a summary level each individual employee. I can even take it one step further and go to the individual check stub just by double clicking on that employee and I can see that detail. Once again, I'm not leaving the accounting. I can see how it comes in. So this will save you time so you're not having to go back and forth be between the different products. So lots of really good inquiries. Um, under tables, this is kind of where you build your house, you build your chart of accounts, you set up your recurring entries. Typically, once you've set the system up, you're not gonna spend any time here. Now, normally in this setting, I don't cover purchase orders, but if there's anybody in the audience that needs to, um, to have an, you know, an integrated purchase order system, we certainly have it. It will create purchase orders. It's going to encumber funds. You can even have a warning you know, as you can, the PO, if you're over budget, but everything's going to flow to accounts payable. You also saw how on your financial statements, you're going to know um, if there's outstanding purchase orders. So like I said, that can be turned on at any point. Most of our products are a one-time $395, so not real expensive to turn on that functionality. So let's take a look at accounts payable. We'll take a look at where you would key in an invoice and take a look at how you would pay it. Um, some really nice features. And I'll go, uh, go ahead and bring up an example. Okay, so here's the screen. You know, you would simply just do a new one. A um, couple key things here. One is if you've got a vendor that's deducting it from your account and, and you just want to record it but not do a paper check, we can easily do that. You would check that box. Um, we're going to also make sure that you're not trying to pay the same invoice to the same vendor. We're going to stop you at that point. Now, notice this little um, box here, paid via EFT. You can um, set up certain vendors to be paid electronically. Instead of getting a paper check, they get an email automatically, and then we create a file that you just send to the bank. So it's a very simple process. And then you might even have a certain situation where you've already received one invoice from a vendor. Later on in the month, you get that second invoice. You can check this to say separate check if that's the way you want to do it. Sometimes they require a separate, separate check. Um, under here where it says invoice amount, down below, we're going to allocate that to as many different accounts, as many different funds, we have the ability to send one check to that vendor. So we'll do all the accounting. Um, if you do have a scenario where you, you need different checking accounts for your different funds, 
we support that as well, but most like to run it through like a pooled cash. So we have that capability. Now, if this is a PO, we bring in all the accounting. You're not having to recode it. We're going to bring it in and you can just confirm that the invoice matches the PO. And if it doesn't, you can make any adjustments. And if you do the attachment right here, you're not going to have to file that document. It stays with the accounting entry. And then up here, you're going to have a lot of recurring payables. I'm sure there's several that you pay all the same, you know, all the time. You can have recurring ones where it's a percentage. You know, maybe it's the phone bill and you enter in the total amount and you've already preset what percent each account pays or it's always, you know, these two accounts, so you can have, or maybe it's always the same dollar amount. So lots of ways to set up those recurring payables. But as you key in the, um, right here, you can get a warning if you're over your budget. You can even have it stop you if you wanna take it that far. But once everything's entered in, uh, most of our clients at some point during the month, you might have some sort of an approval process and this is where you might want to run our council approval report. You've got lots of ways you can sort it. A lot of customers like to do it by fund or department, but that's actually your account structure or maybe even vendor. So I'm going to say fund and then through what date? I'm going to say through today. And what I have here is a report of all the payables that I've entered in, sorted, you know, that are due through today, sorted by fund. I can see all detail, when is it due, what accounts is it coming out of. Um, I even get a budget comparison. So at any point, if there are any questions, hopefully this report will answer those for your council. If you have a situation where you had your meeting and maybe there's a couple that they don't want to pay, we have the ability to deselect. In other words, we're not going to pay it right now. So if I uncheck it, it's still on the system. The next time I run the report, it'll be sitting there. We're just not paying it right now. You might even have a situation where one of those, you want to do a partial payment. So right here, you can enter in the amount that you want to pay. That balance will be sitting there the next time you do the check run. So once again, it's not too late to fine tune that report. Um, once you do have your report, you know, you can go ahead and just print your checks. Um, we do create the file that you send to the bank for all of those electronic checks. And remember, each vendor gets an email once you uh, create that process. Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, if only one person can void checks, you can lock it down by menu option within the software. Now, back to reports, tons of reports and accounts payable. Um, you're going to know unlimited um, payment history, um, check registers, you know, what's still open at the end of the month, lots of things to help you manage your payable process. And then we'll take a peek at a couple of inquiries that I like. One is um, you can drill down right here, you know, if you know the vendor, and maybe you know the vendor starts with an A, but that's all you know. You can do searches if you know what's at the beginning of the name, what's in the middle of the name, or what's at the end. And notice how I can also have three different types of statuses. So those ones that are really inactive or really temporary, you can decide if you want to include those or not. So I'm going to go ahead and select this vendor. And what's nice is I can see every check I've issued. And if anything has been voided, I would know that. I can come over here and look at the invoice or invoices that that um, check paid. I can see the accounting. I can see the status. I can even see the attachment. So if you attach that invoice or who approved it, it's all here. You're not having to go to the filing cabinet. So once again, that capability is included in most of our products. Now, to me, the toughest part of your job is bank reconciliation. And our cash control product allows you to easily reconcile your accounting software to the bank statement. It's going to do a couple of key things for you. One is you can actually create your deposits right here. And so I can pick and choose, you know, maybe I'm going to the bank and I'm pulling everything from the front counter or everything from the billing or the municipal courts, or I can bring it all in and create that uh, deposit slip because we've already handled all of the accounting, we're just creating the actual deposit slip. So I can do that at any point. 
And so here I can come here and decide. Um, I can pick and choose which bank account. And I can um, I can even do a split deposit. I might have one check that needs to go into two different accounts. But what's going to happen is when I do reconcile my bank statement, I'm going to be able to see not only my checks I've issued, but my deposits and any journal entry. So I can come here and actually reconcile that bank statement. And I'll come here and I'll select this one. And in one place, I've got everything that would be on that bank statement. I'm not having to go to two different places. A lot of accounting systems, you gotta go to accounts payable for those and then the general ledger. We've got one central place. I even have the ability to bring in a file from the bank so that we can match everything that the bank says it has so that um, it's, you know, you're dealing with a considerably shorter list. But once you complete the process, you're going to have a report to let you know what's cleared, what's still open. It's a great report for your auditor. Also in this area, um, you're going to have reports. You can create a bank statement. I can reprint deposit slips. I can even see, um, you know, just deposits, you know, what's cleared the bank. And I have the ability to drill down and look at deposits by bank, but I can drill down and see what was in that deposit. So even if I'm going back 10 years, I can go to any deposit and see the makeup of that deposit. So once again, just we pull it all together to simplify that bank rec process. Now there's one other area I'm going to show you on the financial side, and that's our cash receipts. Um, this is one way that you can get money into the accounting system. Think of it as a cash register. You're going to have a lot of walk-in traffic, and it essentially turns your PC into a register. You're going to be able to receipt for everything. No more handwritten receipts. A typical example is with most of our customers is somebody walks in, they want to pay their utility account. They don't know their account number. I can look them up if I know a little bit of information. So, you know, first name, last name, phone number, even their meter ID or the property ID, I can bring in that balance. Um, once I have that customer, if this is the correct one, I have the ability, if they want to pay it all, to go ahead and accept it. I could do a partial payment. At the same time, I could tag on and maybe do a building permit or a license or any other sort of miscellaneous receipt. Um, I do have the ability, you know, when I am ready to tender, I could have, you know, two checks in cash on the same receipt. It will make change. Um, you can use credit cards, but it gives you the ability to handle the money once so that you don't have to go tell the billing or the courts or the tax or even the general ledger. We're going to do it once and put it in the right place. Now, a lot of our municipalities, as they start using other products, we have the ability to bring in, um, if somebody has one check, all the balances. So think about that one utility guy that's got four utility accounts, two tax accounts, and maybe an invoice. I can see all balances. I can pick and choose which ones to pay or select all. So that's kind of getting into that benefit of one database of names and addresses. That's a perfect example. I've got one check. What do I owe you? Um, as I mentioned, um, you're going to be able to print receipts for every transaction. Um, you're going to be able to produce reports if you want to know what did you receive a certain day, um, point in time. You know, maybe I want to see everything that I receded this year and I want to sort it by receipt number, or maybe I want to see everything I receded today and sort it by check, cash, credit card. So lots of ways to pull out what was receded and when. And at any point, you can reprint any receipt. So even if it's from, you know, 10 years ago, you're going to be able to, you know, reprint that receipt and it says reprint on it. So as I mentioned, this is one way to get money back into um, the system. We also have a lot of customers that do payments on their website. And that's another way that you can use the technology and get payments into your solution. And um, what I'm doing is I'm bringing up a website 
and I'm going to actually pretend like I am one of your customers that um, signed up to get their um, utility bill, and I just got an email, and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log on, and I can see that bill, and I can pay that bill. So, the, you know, we're gonna, when we get into the utility billing, we're going to talk about how easy it is to do this. But I can see multiple accounts. I can see unlimited bill for each account. I can uh, view that bill. I may just want to look at it. Or I can pay that bill. And in this scenario, we know exactly how much it is because the bill's sitting there. In this scenario, you're going to collect 100% of the amount due. You get all your money. And the customer pays a convenience fee, which is calculated for using a credit card. And the math is 3% plus 35 cents, which is typically going to be less than a penalty. So it's perfect for those guys that, you know, maybe they're out of town, don't want a penalty, this is less. You're going to have a lot of customers that maybe they don't sign up to get their bill emailed, but they still want to make a payment online. They can do that. You can turn on buttons for other things. It doesn't have to be just utility billing. It can even be things that we don't have the software for, miscellaneous things. So in this scenario, I'm going to enter in my account number. I'm going to enter in how much I'm going to pay. It calculates the convenience fee, and so I have to accept it. But the nice thing is all the payments that happen on your website are integrated. You don't have to key those in. You'll get menu options just to post them in. So that's just another way to get money into um, the accounting system. Now, before we leave um, the financials, I just want to point out, I typically don't cover payroll, but I want you to know that we handle unlimited pay types, deductions, benefits, leave types, all the accounting. So if you like what you see today and you want to learn more, we can set up a time to, you know, go look at payroll and go into other areas as well. Um, what I wanted to do is go ahead and jump over to the utility billing, and then we'll take a look at the report designer. So now under the utility billing, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can bill for as many different services as you want, metered and non-metered. And what I thought we would do first is take a look at all the information that you can track on your customers. Here's that same inquiry. Tell me what you know and we can search. You don't have to memorize account numbers. I'm going to go ahead and select a customer here, Lucy. And on one screen, you're going to have everything about that customer. So this is where you're telling it, who's the customer, where do you send the bill, what services do they have. I want to point out a couple of things that I think you're going to like. One is, um, it is a true cycle billing. Um, we have a lot of customers, they bill everybody in one group, but we do handle those move-ins and move-outs mid-cycle. We'll prorate those. You don't have to hold those guys. We also give you as many different class codes. We can sort reports, you know, balances and consumption by class. So it's just a way to identify certain types of customers. Um, we have different statuses. When you go live, most of your customers are going to be active. We can automatically create service orders based on status. So we know when you've got a new customer, you need a reading or a final. You need a reading or a transfer. Those are automatic. We can do service orders for other events as well, but those are just automatic. Um, we have a status of on and off in the same billing cycle. Maybe they're in, inactive, but you're still billing. I have that status. Or here's a common scenario. They're inactive. You're not billing. So if they come back 10 years later, the balance is sitting there. You know they still owe you money if they try to turn on service again. And then we have a status of transfer. If somebody goes from Main Street to Elm Street, we can move the balance and the deposit to the new address. So we, we move the money. And here's a feature everybody likes, vacant. You've got vacant properties. Um, you're still reading those, and I can let you know what vacant customers have consumption. So once again, it, it lets you be proactive there. Now, under the customer tab, in this scenario, I'm saying they're the owner and the occupant, the same person. That's a typical scenario. However, if you've got multiple people, if you want to send the bill to the renter, but you want to track the owner, you can do that. 
You can even say uh, the, the owner wants to know when they're delinquent. Send them a copy of the delinquent notice or maybe the bill and the delinquent notice. Or you might even have a situation where you're going to send the bill to the owner, but you need to know who lives there. So as you can see, I can track multiple people. I can even have a situation where somebody outside of town is responsible and gets the bill, but I have an owner and an occupant and everybody can get copies. So it's all in how you check that box. Um, we can have primary, secondary. Um, you can even have customers that, you know, they sign up to get um, an electronic bill. So it unchecks paper and checks email and stores their email address. That's an interactive process. You're not having to manually do that. It happens automatically when they sign up for that service. You can even have customers that, um, you know, sign up to get their bill drafted. Um, we, they still get a bill. It says do not pay because we know it's being drafted. Those are perfect candidates for customers that are getting their bill emailed instead of mailed. Um, under metered services, as I mentioned, unlimited. We've got customers that bill for electric, gas, and, and water. Or another scenario is maybe this one customer has 20 water meters. There is no limit to the number of meter charges. They can all have different rates. Um, you're you're going to have different meter IDs, locations, how many dials. So we store all that information on the meter plus additional things. Um, you can have unlimited non-meter charges. It might be sewer where you're basing water on that consumption, or it might even be um, just a flat dollar amount, or it can even be something called a declining balance. I've got a customer that they owe me $1,000. I can have it billed $50 each month until the 1000 is paid off. So all of those things can be billed for and all the accounting, and then once again, non-recurring charges. You can have turn on fees, turn off fees, bad checks. There is no limit. You can define the accounting. We can keep track of all those different charges. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of customers that do deposits. You can have multiple deposits. We keep track of who has one, who's been refunded, ones you're still holding. We can refund them when they final. We can also refund them based on good payment history. Um, other information. These are user definable, so you can define these fields. Our report designer, you can report on these fields. You can have custom reports that you're using your user definable fields. We also do a nice job with actions. Things that happen, they're disconnected, create an action. They give you a bad check, it creates an action. They're on your extension list, it creates an action. You can create your own codes, so it gives you a way to document and you've got unlimited text on comments and reference. So to me, it's way better than notes because it's a specific type of note. And you can report on those. And then you've got attachments. Maybe they damaged a meter, you took a picture, or they sent you a letter. So you can have unlimited attachments. If you can attach it in an email, you can attach it to your software. Now, you can also go right to their inquiry without leaving this screen. That's one way to get there. I've got other ways to get there. But what we want is hopefully one screen that if you've got that customer on the phone, we can answer all the questions. So a couple of questions might be, what do they owe you? I can age that balance. Maybe they have a question about a bill or maybe they didn't get a bill and you can look at summary information you know, it breaks out all the charges. You could pick any one of these and you can reprint the bill. So I could go back 10 years ago and reprint the bill. Or my guess is they're going to have really specific questions. They want to know, like, why is my water so high? So you can strip out everything else and look at when you build water, the date, the amount, um, the reading. Was it an actual or an estimate? And the consumption. So once again, I can hopefully answer that question. Or maybe there's a question on a certain payment. How did you apply that $100 payment? So you can double click and see how that um, payment was applied. Or maybe they have a question, um, they wanna see history. Um, you can run a report from right here for any date range. If I leave it blank, it picks up everything of their history. So payments, penalties, adjustments, 
anything that's hit that account. And another question is maybe there's a question on a service order. So any service order that's tied to this customer on this screen, you've got access to. You can see summary. And if you have more questions, you can drill down and, and get to the detail. Who called? What did they tell you? What did your team do? So you're able to, once again, answer all of those questions. And that all happens right here. And another nice little feature is we're going to ask you in the setup if you like Google Maps or Yahoo Maps. And depending on which field you're on, you know, the meter address, the billing address, will take you to um, that website. So just by uh, hitting the map. So once again, that's information that you're tracking on your customers. Um, we do handle, if you have a meter that needs to change out in the middle of a cycle, we know there's consumption on both. Um, we have a lot of customers that still read their meters. We have a lot of customers that use automated solutions. So um, we have a very long list of vendors that we work with. And part of our due diligence is, you know, finding out what you're using and just making sure that our file matches so that you're not keying in reading. So you might even have, you know, one route where you're keying in readings and the rest are automated. So you can kind of mix and match. But either way, we can get those re readings keyed in very quickly, either electronically or very quickly key them in. And we even have what I call a plan B. I can do a mass estimate. If there's a problem with your uh, reading devices, I can still do an estimate. It's based on every billing you've ever done, so it's a pretty good estimate. Um, I do have reports so that if you've got readings that are out of range or missing, you're going to know that. Or I mentioned earlier, I might want to find out for vacant properties, which vacant properties have consumption. I want to be proactive. Um, you can still, if you, you can still get payments keyed directly into the billing system. So we talked about payments at the counter. We talked about payments on your website. We talked about payments that you're drafting. You probably still get a lot of payments in the mail where your customers mail you a check. We have a really fast and easy screen that you can very quickly batch in all those checks. Um, we have the ability to print on the bill a barcode, so you can actually read the barcode, which is going to read the account number. And once that account number is entered in, I'm going to look one up since I don't have a barcode here. And I and notice what happens. The minute that account number is entered in, it assumes it's a check. It brings in the amount due. And if they're paying 100%, the one thing that I would probably key in is the check number. Now, we know that they don't always pay 100%. So if this customer is paying $144, they think they're doing you a favor by rounding up, we handle it. There's a credit. Um, or if they pay $140, they are short $3.07. It's going to automatically apply that based on how you've defined it to apply it. So once again, it's a fast, easy process. Um, also here under daily, I do have the ability, if I need to reverse something, I've got an easy way that I can reverse the check. Once again, if I know the account number, I can tell it. But notice what happens once I do reverse it. I can pick one, so I can pick any check, put it out there. At the same time, I can hit them with an NSF fee because the check bounced and create an action, no more checks. So the next time they walk in, I'll have a warning either at the counter or anywhere in the software, no more checks. And I'm going to tell the accounting system. So once again, very tightly integrated. So once, so those are things you might do daily. Um, I want to talk briefly about the billing process. We've got a couple of really nice features. One is, um, as I mentioned, we're a true cycle billing. I can do an off cycle billing every day if I need to. I can go ahead and move those guys out, move the new people in. Um, but typically, you're going to bill your whole group. And in this example, I'm going to say you have 1,000 customers. So um, let's say in this example, though, you've got a problem with one customer. I can even pull out that one customer and bill this guy on Friday and get the bills out on Tuesday. So even that, though they're in the normal group, I can pull them out, 
uh, and, and move forward with the 99%, to me, that's a real stress reliever. So I can still manage that group. Once I have my group, I'm going to run the edits. I'm going to calculate. I'm going to print a billing register to make sure that everything looks good. And then I'm going to print the bills. Now, here's what happens. If you've got customers that have signed up to get their bill emailed, we know don't print those guys. We're going to automatically send the email out. And remember, the guys that are being drafted, they're still going to get a bill. Now, as soon as you hit post, we're going to automatically send the emails to all of those customers that are getting their bill electronically. The bill is there. They can immediately go to that website and look at it. They can even pay it immediately. Um, we have a lot of customers um, that have decided, you know, it's cheaper for Central Square to print our bills than it is for us. We're able to pull in all those different customers. So if that's the case, as soon as you hit print, you can go to our website and track the print job. You know that we received it, we printed it, we mailed it. So you can completely outsource your, your printing and it costs you less and it doesn't even include your time. Um, we do offer a postcard or a statement that you can pick and choose, but they're both um, very nice looking forms. And um, we also do a really nice job with the delinquent process. So we can do a delinquent letter, we can do a delinquent postcard, um, we can do disconnects where we automatically put disconnect charges on there. And then remember, we create that action. We know exactly the date they were disconnected. So these are things that you might do periodically. Um, I can even do an adjustment, and it affects the balance, positive or negative, immediately. You're going to find that we have lots of reports, unlimited history. We've got payment history, consumption history. Um, I can even pull out reports just for a certain charge. Um, I, I have the ability to get a balance report for any date, not just today. I can go back in time. So I think you'll find that we have tons of reports. Um, like I said, I know I've got about six minutes left. I wanna show you a couple more things. One is just very quickly kind of looking at the benefits of having that one database of names and addresses. Think how nice it would be if you get a call from one of your constituents, you go to one screen and you can see all activity. So on one screen, I can see their utility account, an invoice you've sent them, their tax bills, any code violations, permits, licenses, just by knowing the name. And then you can drill down and actually get to the detail. And so as you start automating other areas, we've got those components. We have the exact same view by property. So for any parcel, you can see everything that's happened at that parcel. You know who owns it. You know the valuation. Have there been code violations at this property? What utilities at this property? So you get a view based on person and property. So like I said, we can automate that. Um, we have courts and public safety. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you, I'm down to my five minutes, is our report designer. So this gives you a tool to create any kind of report. Um, we're going to deliver it with reports that you can modify, but primarily you're going to just to create new ones. Um, you know, you're going to be able to search. I may want to get a quick list of all my vendor reports. Here they are. Or you can say, I want my favorites at the top of the list. Now, um, I'm going to show you a couple reports that we've used this tool to create new reports. Then I'm going to show you how if you do your own, how we give you all the data fields. So one example is, here's a report that we use the tool, and we give you the ability to put drill down in a report. Now, you've seen drill down on my inquiries, but here's a report that you can actually push a button and see the detail. What makes up this number? So think about how nice on a financial report where you've got a button, and if you push it, what's the drill down? So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And here's the accounting that makes up that number. So that drill down feature is available on the different reports that we have. Obviously, you know, you can have different fonts, you can have your logo, um, you can search for um, words in your report. Maybe I'm looking for the word fuel, here it is. Your, the reports that you create, you can do any kind of file. 
So if somebody wants, you know, maybe these five different data fields from utilities, you just grab them, drop them, create the file. You've got access to them. So it totally redefines um, the way you do your reporting. I'm going to show you one more that we've used this tool to create um, a financial statement. And instead of, uh, it's more graphical. You know, boards like to see graphs and charts instead of just numbers. And it's an example where, you know, we've used this tool to um, create that. So right here it is. And so I've got, you know, budget versus actual. And so I've, you know, I've got graphical information or, you know, different types. Of, so, you know, you're able to use this tool to do that as well. So you could have a report and then graphs at the bottom. So what I want to do very quickly is just show you if you want to add a new one, you would say new report. I'm going to call this, um, you describe it. I'm going to say we're going to report on payroll just to show you all the payroll elements and by employee. So essentially, once you decide to do a new report, you're going to have a blank canvas. And it's going to give you the ability to, to drag and drop that information. So over here on the right-hand side are literally all the fields that we have in our payroll product that you can drag and drop. Deductions, benefits, pay types, leave types, all the information you want to know on your employee. Over on the left-hand side are some tools. Um, you might want to have your logo. You just upload it. Um, you want to give it a name. Do the name. But over here, let's say you want just a really simple report that has the employee's name. Oh, maybe their, their ID. You might want to know the department. And you come up here and maybe you want to know payroll totals. You want to know gross, year-to-date gross. That could be a report. That could be a file. I mean, that's a very simple illustration. Now, granted, you would probably want to do a label and say name. So when you run the report, you know what that is. And you can grab multiple fields at the same time. But you're able to do charts and graphs and insert tables. You can even, you know, add sorts. Like maybe you've got a large payroll group and you want to sort it by department. You know, you could do things like that. You can do filters, you know, maybe this range to that range. But the key thing that we're doing is we're giving you access to all of your fields. So, if, you know, the general ledger, accounts payable, payroll, utilities. Um, we've got it for tax billing so that you can just pick and choose those fields to create files and reports. And then we produce training on this. So, you know, you can do really fancy reports or really simple things that you just need to get data out. So we've tried to simplify that. So I know it is straight up noon Eastern time. Um, what I wanted to do to see if anybody has any questions, um, I'm going to unmute everybody. So if there are any questions on anything you've seen today, feel free to ask. Or you can certainly email or call me if you want to learn more, if you want pricing. I think you'll find that we're very affordable. Most of our products are a one-time $300, supports $120 a year. So obviously, as you add other users, you know, the, the price goes down for the second and third and fourth and so on. Um, we've been doing this for over 40 years. We've got over 1,000 customers and would certainly uh, like to show you more. Well, I certainly thank everybody for their time. And like I said, feel free to reach out if you do have specific questions or if you decide you want to learn a little bit more.